Hi, welcome to the 8th video of this series which is back office, settlement, swifts and reconciliation. In this video we will cover what are the various function of back office like trade prematching, trade settlement, trade reconciliation, then some of the swifts which are used in back office, then after that the reconciliation, cash and stock reconciliation. As seen in previous video of trade life cycle, back office is an integral part of trade life cycle where back office supports settlement of the executed trades before on and after settlement date it supports the various functions which are needed for the settlement of the trade back office functions can be usually segregated into three categories which is trade prematching trade settlement cash and stock reconciliation Apart from that, various other accounting and finance functions also fall into back office category. Back office acts as a communication link between the depository and the broker. In other words, we can say that back office is a link to the real world once a trade is executed. Now coming to trade prematching. Trade prematching means matching the economic details of a trade with the counterparty. Back office teams are responsible for matching the economic details of the trade with counterparty where the economic details will include the trade date, settlement date, quantity of shares, security identifier, ISIN, what are the economic parameters of that trade, the price at which the trade is settling and the total amount that is needed to settle that trade. Back office teams perform various activities to assist trade pre-matching. Some of the activities are listed as below. Setting up system for straight through processing. Back office teams are responsible for setting up the system for STP or straight through processing where the trade details can directly enter from middle office systems into the back office systems and directly go into the market to the custodian. Back office teams are responsible to instruct the trades which has an exception to the custodian. For example, if a trade for a new counterparty comes into the system there will be there can be a situation where no SSIs or standard settlement instructions are set up for that counterparty. In that scenario back office teams will be responsible to instruct those trades manually so that they can reach to the custodian before the settlement date. When a trade goes from the back office system into the market to the custodian, custodian tries to match it on the depository with counterparty instructions. There can be various scenarios because of which the trade can remain unmatched in the market. Back office teams will be responsible to resolve those exceptions. So custodian may send back a status update on trade saying that there is an economic mismatch or there is a quantity difference with the counterparty and back office teams will have to speak with counterparties, back office teams to resolve those exceptions so that the trade can match before the settlement date. Sometimes there can be a scenario that the back office system is incapable of sending correct swifts out to custodian for some trades. For such trades, back office teams will be responsible to manually create the swift messages to reach to the custodian so that the settlement can happen on those trades. Some of the examples can be when there are new rights issue, the security may not be set up or if there is a new security which has come into the market but not yet set up in the back office reference systems then the back office team may need to manually instruct those trades to the custodian. Although trade prematching happens before the settlement date, back office teams have a view on current positions and near future position. If they see any short positions in future, they can raise it to relevant desks so that a cover can be arranged for those short positions. Back office teams are responsible for setting up standard settlement instructions for the counterparties and setting up our own accounts for settlements. So in back office systems, uh, the back office teams will do the standard settlement instruction setup for counterparty which will contain the counterparty's beneficiary big, their beneficiary account number, their beneficiary custodian. So that is how uh, a trade when goes into market, the custodian can identify who the counterparty is from that settlement swift. Post trade prematching, trade settlement is a very important function which our back office team performs. Back, back office team manages various settlement related issues. Any issue which can hamper or affect the settlement of the trade on settlement date or after the settlement date, 
that needs to be handled and resolved by the back office teams. Although it is expected that in trade pre-matching all the unmatched trades should get matched, but there may be scenarios where there still are few unmatched trades in the back office system because of some issues. So the settlement teams will be responsible to resolve those exceptions on unmatched trades, get those trades matched on settlement date or try to resolve it as soon as possible for, so that the trades can settle. Back office teams communicate directly with the local custodians or the local agents to know the status of the trade, settlement status or why there is an unmatched trade if they do not receive a status back from custodian or other settlement related issues. Settlement teams are responsible to ensure that there are sufficient cash and stock positions at the depository to allow smooth settlement of trades. Citing such a scenario, an example can be when there is a big sell trade which is about to settle which will bring in a lot amount of cash which will be used then for the buying of shares. But for some reason, if that sell trade is not settling, that cash is not coming into our account. This may affect the settlement of buy, our buy side of the trades. Usually in such scenarios, custodians give us an overdraft facility. But sometimes if the overdraft is not available, the back office team may need to contact cash team to get more cash arranged for settlement of that trade. Nowadays, a broker can have position in multiple depositories. There are few international depositories like Euroclear, Clearstream and along with that there are local depositories. Settlement team will be responsible to move the positions across these depositories for the settlement to happen. So there, there may be a scenario where we are buying stock in the local uh, depository but selling it in Euroclear or Clearstream. Then settlement teams will be responsible for creating swifts or instructing custodians to move the positions from one depository to other depository to cover the short positions in different depositories. Settlement teams are responsible to agree trade splits or pair offs with the counterparty. There can be scenarios where we are short of small portion of the trade and we may not be able to deliver. In that situation, we can discuss with counterparties and split the trade into two shapes where we can deliver the large chunk of the trade while the later, uh, at later stage the remaining shape can settle when the shares come in. Settlement teams also agree trade pair offs with counterparty. In scenarios where we have both buy and sell trades on the same security with the counterparty. For example, if we are selling 10 shares of particular security to a counterparty and buying 5 shares from them and we only hold 5 shares of those particular securities in our account, then both of the trades will never settle in case the counterparty has no shares. In such a scenario, we can agree a pair off so that we can pair the, those both buy and sell on our side and instruct a single trade of selling of five shares, which should let the trade settle as we have five shares in our account. In case there is a net zero quantity pair off, for example, if we are buying five shares from the counterparty at 10 rupees and selling five shares to the counterparty at 12 rupees, then there is a net difference of zero shares being transferred, but there is a net cash as 10 rupees. This kind of pair off is called zero pair offs. And for such a scenario, we will, need, we will need to make a payment. Settlement team will do these manual payments and close these trades manually, cancel the instructions from the market. This will happen if both counterparties do not hold any shares. So in such a scenario, the trades will not settle till in the zero pair off is done. Buy in is a scenario where a seller is unable to deliver the shares and the buying counterparty goes into the market and buys shares on their own and whatever is the price difference, they charge the seller for those shares. In case there is a buy-in risk, then that uh, we are not able to deliver the shares because of some short positions, then the settlement team is responsible to ask for covers or ask the desk to cover the short positions for those particular securities. In, even in case of buy-ins, there are few markets which are same-day buy-in. In, like in European markets, Greece and Poland are same-day buy-in markets, which means that we need to deliver the stock on the settlement date itself and can't be delayed further. In such scenarios, the coverage of buy-in shares 
becomes more important and so these markets are considered as risk markets as well. Post settlement, back office reconciliation teams are responsible for cash and stock reconciliation. This is to ensure that cash and stock settlement has happened as intended means what is there in the system that is the thing that has happened in the market as well. Reconciliation teams are responsible for post settlement reconciliation of stock and cash activities. Usually that happens the next day after the settlement day. So how does reconciliation happens? Our local agents and custodians keep on sending us shifts throughout the day of any settlement of stock and cash. Also at end of day they send us the final cash and stock positions. Back office systems also create feeds which are called ledgers for the reconciliation system to recognize. These feeds contain the details of trade settlement like how much stock has settled, how much cash has settled on a particular trade. These ledgers are then matched in the reconciliation system with the agent statements which a agent has been sending throughout the day. So there can be a one to one stock reconciliation, end of day position stock reconciliation, one to one cash reconciliation and end of day cash reconciliation. Reconciliation teams may also need to post journals in case there are scenarios of manual settlements or some exceptional settlements where the system cannot generate the ledgers for that. Also while the trades are settling there is a tolerance which depositories provide. So the exact match of the cash may not be there between the ledger and agent statement which may get accumulated. To clear that cash the reconciliation teams may need to post journals so that that tolerance cash is cleared from the reconciliation system. Reconciliation teams need to investigate the breaks in the reconciliation system and if they find any duplicate settlements they may need to agree reversals with the counterparty. For example we may have agreed a split of a trade with the counterparty but by the time our swifts actually reach the agent after agreement there may be a settlement of the original trade already happened. So there may be a scenario that we are selling some shares and we might have delivered those same shares twice to the same counterparty. So this will appear in reconciliation as a break and the reconciliation teams will have to agree a reversal with the counterparty where the counterparty systems will also show the same breaks. Now coming to settlement shifts. Back office systems send out various swift messages to the custodians to ensure settlement of trades to ensure communication with the custodians. Different types of swifts are described further. SWIFT is acronym for Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication. SWIFT Corporation has created standard swift messages so that the standardization of how the SWIFT message should, should be, what information should it contain and what are the different types of SWIFT messages which can be used where and how. So coming to the first one, MT540. This is a receive free SWIFT message. So in case there is a buyer and a seller, then the buyer and the buyer is receiving stock free of cost. So there can be scenarios like there is something called security lending in which the cash is not involved directly. So in such a scenario the buyer will actually receive stock free of cost. Then in such a scenario the buyer has to send MT540 to receive the stock from the seller through the custodian. MT541 in case of a cash trade where both cash and stock are involved the buyer will send a MT541 which is receive against payment. In this both the cash and stock, stock components will be there in the SWIFT message. MT542 is the deliver free SWIFT message. This will be used by the seller in case there is no cash component on the trade. MT543 is deliver against payment. This will be used by the seller to deliver the shares against cash. 
So in this Swift message, both the cache and stock component will be there along other identifiers. Also, this means that the cache and stock will move instantaneously or simultaneously. So when the seller is delivering the shares at the same moment, his account will get credited with cash. MT599. This is a free form narrative, which means that this is a free text Swift message where the authorizing party can send a Swift message in a written text to ensure that custodian receives this message as authority to perform some actions on the sender's behalf. MT599 gives a flexibility to create some message with text. So this helps in some scenarios where a buyer or a seller is unable to send a perfect Swift message from the system. Now coming to cash settlement Swifts. While the stock settlement Swifts are always bi-direction, which means both the buyer and seller has to send the Swifts, those Swift messages need to match with each other and then only settlement happens. While mostly the cash settlement is unidirectional, where the payer just has to send the Swift message, his account is get debited as per the instructions on the Swift message. MT101 is a request for transfer where a sender or the payer will send it this message to his custodian or bank to ensure that uh, his account is debited and uh, with the instructions on which account to be credited. MT2XX are the messages where financial institutions request the transfer. MT9XX are cash management relevant messages where the cash management can send the message out or they can receive the messages from custodian on cash status. MT2XX are the messages where financial institutions request the transfer. MT9XX are cash management relevant messages where the cash management can send the message out or they can receive the messages from custodian on cash status. Similar to MT599, MT299 is a free format Swift message where the sender can write a text message to his custodian authorizing some payment. Only difference between MT599 and 299 is that 299 is used for cash as free form narrative while 599 is used for stock free form narrative. In settlements, there are incoming swifts as well from which we get the trade status updates. There are few stock settlement confirmations. For example, MT548. This is an agent status update Swift where agent sends back a status if a trade is matched or unmatched and agent can also input more information like why the trade is unmatched, if there is some economic parameter mismatch or if there is a counterparty mismatch. MT544 is receive free settle confirmation, which means that if we have sent out a MT540, when it settles, agent will send back MT544 saying that your receive free trade has settled in market. MT545 is receive against payment settle confirmation, which means that if we have sent out MT541, which is receive against payment settlement outgoing, then once it is settled, agent will send back MT545 to confirm that the receive against payment trade has settled in market. MT546 is deliver free settle confirmation, which means that if we have sent out MT542, which is a deliver free from our system, then once it is settled, agent will send a confirmation back on MT546. MT547 is deliver against payment settle confirmation, which means that if we have sent out a MT543, which is a deliver against payment from our system, then once this uh, trade is settled, agent will send back a MT547 confirming the settlement has happened for our delivery against payment settlement instructions. Now coming to cash settlement confirmation messages. MT900 is when our cash agent confirms us that there has been a debit into our account as per our instructions and MT910 is a confirmation of credit when our agent receives cash from some counterparty. We have come to the end of this video. So if you like our video, don't forget to share. You can also subscribe our YouTube channel, which is Capital Markets Easy. 
or you can drop us your queries on our email that is capitalmarketseasy at gmail.com no spaces please hope you like these videos keep on sending back your queries thank you